Hey everyone, Troy here. Today I'm going to show you how to take top quality real estate photos like this. What we need for a real estate shoot is a tripod, flash, two pocket receivers, and a wide angle lens. Now I use an Avenger stand with a quarter inch to baby pin adapter to mount my tripod head. I have my Impact Light Trek 4 flash head um, and a Pocket Wizard transceiver retrofitted to the flash um, to communicate with my camera. On my 6D, I have the other Pocket Wizard receiver set to the same channel as the transceiver on the flash. It's really simple to set it up. All you really have to do is have both receiver and transceiver set to the same channel so they can communicate. And of course, my lens is my 16 to 35 f2.8. And uh, for the purpose of real estate photos, I always have it to 16 millimeters. For the settings on the camera, um, it's important to put your ISO as low as it can go. Aperture should be set at f11, but for larger rooms that are kind of longer that you need more depth, um, you can do it to like f13. Color temperature is at 5500, which is equivalent to daylight. And the reason that you want that is because um, flashes like my impact flash is set to 5500 so that balances it so that you get a true white. Shutter speed, I usually start at 1 over 40 and then adjust accordingly going longer or if I have to make it even quicker. In regards to the flash, um, I always start with it at full intensity, full brightness, 1 over 1 and then go from there. It's important to start by surveying the house that you're shooting. Make sure that countertops and surfaces and grounds are all clear of clutter. You want it to be as clean and simple as possible. Make sure that all lights are turned on inside the house and for additional light, open up all the blinds and make sure that they're symmetrical. For both the kitchen and the master bedroom, it's important to take four setups from each corner of the room so that you get a real perspective of what these rooms are about. Now it's absolutely imperative for every setup that you do that you use a tripod. And the reason that you really wanna use a tripod is because the keyword is exposure blending. Now what that means is that you're gonna take multiple pictures with the flash, varying the settings of shutter speed and light intensity, and you're gonna combine that with non-flash photos. And hence, that's where you get the exposure blending. Dropping the non-flash photos on top of the flash photos to get rid of flash artifacts that would be in the image. From my experience, the best settings for bedrooms and kitchens are having the shutter speed set to about one over 40 and the intensity of the flash about um, half, half intensity. Now again, this depends on the size of the room. If it's a smaller bedroom or a smaller kitchen, you're gonna wanna bring down the intensity of that flash. Now side note, if you went ahead and did the 5500 or daylight color balance, um, it's very important for those non-flash photos that in post you cool them down because otherwise they're gonna be a little too warm, they're gonna give you a bit of an orange look. And you wanna make sure that you match that color temperature um, with the flash images as much as possible. So you're gonna apply that logic and all those steps to every room that you shoot. For bedrooms, it's very important to aim the barrel of the lens down the center of the room. If there's a fan in the room, um, what I typically do is I make sure that the fan is at the center of the image and at the top, and that's just a good way of, of creating symmetry and this nice depth in the image. For bathrooms, um, it's very important that you put down the toilet seats and remove toiletries, anything that is really unsightly to the eye. Outside, it's very important to use one image and then what you do in camera raw is you'll kind of adjust it so you have one dark image and then you have one light image. And then what you do is you drop the lighter image on the darker image and erase in the shadows to get more of a dynamic range. But it's important to have one shot that you use because outside there's trees, there's plants that move. Um, so you'll notice if you use several different images, these plants moving. Now the reason I use an Avenger stand rather than a tripod is it gives me a superior perspective on the house. Um, I can raise the Avenger stand to about 10, 15 feet and it looks really nice. Um, tripods, you can't do that with. Thanks for watching guys. Hit that like and subscribe button. And until next time, I will talk to you later. Bye bye.